9.4 is the intersection of three planes. So the plan for this lesson is to go over all the different possibilities that can happen with three planes. And I'm going to do two of the examples as well with this first lesson. And then um, I'll do some more examples in another video. Okay, so let's talk about three planes. Now remember when we look at this set of diagrams that I've made, that the lesson is on the intersection of three planes. Okay, so they have to all intersect, the three of them. So we have two columns. We have the consistent, which means yes, the three planes have intersected, or we have inconsistent. So let's look at the inconsistent first because that will make clear what consistent means. So consistent means no solution. So we could have three planes that are all, all have the same normals and they're all parallel, but they're not touching. It's like the floor, the tabletop, the ceiling. So we have three planes, parallel and distinct. All three normal vectors are multiples of each other. Okay, so you know how that works. So floor, table, ceiling. What I'm going to do for you, I'll take a picture of this and post it as well. So don't stop and try to draw this. It's crazy. Okay, so the other option is that we have two planes that are coincident. So two planes are interacting here, but not three. That's why it's still inconsistent. So we have two planes on top of each other. So think two sheets of paper and then a third one floating above it. So again, we are not intersecting the three planes at all here. The third example is that we have one plane going like this way and we have two cutting across. These two are parallel to each other and this one is cutting right across. And again, you don't see three planes interacting here at one place. The last inconsistent example looks like this. So there's this infinite triangular prism that is in, in between all these, three-dimensional obviously. We have parallel lines and you can see that this pink one is intersecting with these other two but not at the same place. So we never have any three. It would be more like this, right? So this one with that one and then one just cutting across this way. So these are all the inconsistent drawings. This is what could happen when we have no intersection of three planes. So let's go to the consistent ones because those are the ones we're going to be doing the calculations for. I will give you some examples of planes that would give you uh, some of these examples later on as well though. Okay, so let's go to the big stuff, the consistent one. One or more solutions. So this one these three planes are intersecting at this little point right here. This is only the point where they're intersecting. So it's a unique solution in which the three planes intersect at only one point. So hopefully you can see sort of the three dimensionality. Obviously I wasn't going to try to draw this freehand for you during the lesson or it would never have worked out. So you can see that this plane here, this one and this one all intersect at this one itty bitty point. How are you going to know? if this is the way the planes are intersecting. That is going to go back to that whole thing about triple scalar product, and I'm going to get to that in a minute again as well. The triple scalar product, if the triple scalar product is some value that is not zero, this is going to be the type of solution you're getting, one point of intersection. If you have an infinite number of solutions described by one parameter, in which case the three planes intersect in a line. So we have a line of intersection like this. So this could happen when the triple scalar product is equal to zero. It's possible that the planes may or may not intersect and if they do, it will be on a line. Okay, so here's another type of line of intersection. So we have two planes that are coincident. They're on top of each other here. And we have this one cutting across, so all the three planes are still intersecting along this line. So you could have two parallel and one not. These, of course, each of the normals would be different for this one. And finally, the last consistent one is when you have um, all three planes all stacked up on top of each other like this. You have an infinite number of solutions 
described by two parameters. The planes are coincident. The solution is all points in the plane or on all of the planes, right? They're all the same. So obviously these would all have the same normals um, when you simplified them or change the multiples of the normals to make them all the same, you would also find that their D values would also all be the same. Okay, so that's way it could be. So we have the consistent group and we have the inconsistent group. So the first example I'm going to do for you is going to be consistent. Number one, that's going to be how do we know if the planes intersect in this one little point of intersection? Okay, so let's move on to that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is this triple scalar product. We talked about this before in a previous lesson, but just to remind you, it says it gives the volume of a parallelopiped defined by the three vectors. If the TSP is zero, then the volume is zero and the vectors are coplanar. This means that the planes may or may not intersect if they do, it will be a line. If the TSP is not equal to zero, any other value, then it will be a single point of intersection. Okay, so let's go with an example here. Consistent number one. So if you print out this, you'll see consistent number one means this type of situation here, one point of intersection. So we have these three planes here determine the intersection of the three planes. So the first thing you want to do is check the normals to see if they are parallel and then check using the TSP to see if the normals are coplanar. Okay, so we know how to do that. We'll say normal one. What's normal one? So normal for the first plane is two, one, one. Two, one, one. The second normal is going to be 0, 3, minus 2. Don't forget, if there's nothing there, it has a 0. 0, 3, minus 2. And the third normal is going to be 3, 1, 2. Okay, so I take a quick look at those and say, oh, there's no chance these are scalar multiples of one another. They obviously are not. And so now I'm going to check by using the triple scalar product to see whether or not these... Um, three planes will intersect in a single point. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do, now remember it doesn't matter which order you do these in, but I'm going to do N1 uh, dotted with the cross product of N2 and N3. So it's going to be 2, 1, 1, and I'm going to dot that with the cross product of 0, 3, minus 2 with 3, 1, 2. Now, do you remember how to do the cross product? Sure you do. Let's write that out over here. So we have um, 0, 3, minus 2, 0, 3, minus 2, and we write them out twice, one above each other. We get rid of the last rows. And we put our little x's here to tell us to multiply and then subtract. So n2 crossed with n3 is going to give me, I'm going to do 3 times 2 is 6, minus minus 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And I have minus 6 minus nothing. And I have 0 minus 9. So there's my cross product. So that means I'm going to dot 2, 1, 1, dot product with 8 minus 6 minus 9, and I'm going to get a scalar, as you recall. So that's going to be 16 minus 6 minus 9. 16 minus 15 is 1. Okay, so the TSP is not equal to 0, therefore the planes will intersect at a single point. Intersect at a single point. So you need to make that little statement and then you're going to use your matrices to find that point of intersection. So I've written out the, um, the equations. Now remember, um, when you go to use matrices, you have to have equals something. 
So if they gave you the plane as 2x plus y plus z plus 4 equals 0, then you would have to make sure that you moved this to the other side to have an equals. Okay, just a real little reminder for you. Okay, so I've written out the, um, the matrix here. So I have 2, 2, 1, 1, minus 4, 0, 3, minus 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, minus 7. And what I'm going to do now for you is I'm going to perform the um, operations on this. I probably had that read off the page, didn't I? Okay, so now we're going to get this into um, that lovely format where we have ones on the diagonals and zeros underneath. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, row one and I'm going to subtract row three. I know that's going to give me a negative. So if you are really fast on these, you can say I'm going to do row two minus row three and I'm going to take the negative of that and that will give me one in this position because two minus three is minus one and the minus of minus one is plus one and one minus one is zero and of course it doesn't matter what sign that is it's still going to be zero and this one is going to be one minus two is minus one and the minus of that is one line and then I have minus 4, minus, minus 7. That's going to be 3. And I'm doing the minus of that. So that's minus 3. You have to really keep these things, like say it out loud to yourself almost, because it's, it's hard to remember what you're doing here. Okay, so then I had the 0 here. That's fine. 3, minus 2, and 2. And I want a 0 here. So for now, I'm, I'm just going to write this out here just to make it really clear for you. And now I'm going to do um, row 3 minus 3 row 1s. Row 3 minus 3 row 1s. Okay, so I'm doing this minus 3 of those. So I'm going to just write out the first two rows because we're not doing any operations on those. And nicely I have that 0 there. You might want to stop and finish this on your own if you haven't. It's good practice. Okay, so row 3 minus 3, row 1. So 3 minus 3 is 0. Great. Now I have 1 minus 3 times 0. So 1 minus nothing is still 1. And I have 2 minus 3 is going to be minus 1. And minus 7 minus minus 3 is going to be um, plus 9. So minus 7 plus 9 is going to give me 2. Okay, so now I want to get a 1 here. So to get a 1 there, I'm going to have to do this row minus 2 of these rows. So R2 minus 2, so R, yeah, R2 minus 2 R3s. So I'll leave that first row right where it was. Second row. This is what I'm working on. So I'm going to subtract 2, 2 times this. So 3 minus 2 is 1. And minus 2 minus minus 2 is going to give me 0. And 2 minus 4 is going to be minus 2. And I have 0, 1, minus 1, 2. Okay, things are looking pretty good. I just need to get a 0 here and a 1 here. So go to the next row right on the page here. Okay, so how am I going to get a zero here? I'm going to do um, row three minus row two. Row three minus row two. Make your bracket, write out the ones that you already have. This is kind of tedious, isn't it? Zero, one, zero, minus two. Okay, now I'm going to subtract. Zero minus zero, zero. Good, I didn't want to change that. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 minus minus 1 is plus 1. Um, row 3 minus row 2. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way there. Where's my eraser? Ah, so much stuff on my desk. If you could see it, you'd probably see Miss Havrat organize things here. Okay, so just a minute here. Okay, so we're doing... Oh, row 3 minus row 2. Things are really tough these days, aren't they? 1 minus 1 
minus 1 minus 0 is minus 1, and 2 minus minus 2 is 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, am I right? 2 minus 2 minus 4. Okay, so that means that z here, I could divide by minus 1 if you really want to get fancy here. So row 3 times minus 1 if you want, and that, that will finish it up nice and neatly. So now we're just going to do back substitution. 0, 1, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, and minus 4. So that means z is equal to minus 4. This is my z. Remember these were x, y, z. And I'm going to say um, y equals minus 2. That one's easy because I didn't have any z's to substitute in. It's just y. And my x is going to be x plus z is equal to minus 3. And my z is minus 4. So x minus 4 equals minus 3. And x is equal to 1. So therefore, 1 minus 2 minus 4 is the point of intersection. Now, how can you check that? You can check that by going back to, oh, did I throw that too far away here? No. You can check by plugging those values. I'm going to fold this here. And you can plug them into this equation here. So if I put in 1, I would have 2 minus 2 is 0 minus 4 equals minus 4. Check. Um, no x's. Y is minus 2, so that's minus 6 plus 8 is 2. Yes. And I have 3 minus 2, that's 1. Minus 8 is minus 7. So you can double check your answer back into here to make sure the left side is equal to the right side in each of those planes. Okay, so that's how you find a single point of intersection. Now let's do um, a second example here. Where's my beautiful drawing for you? Oh, lost it. Sorry, too bad. <laughs> well, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, so the second one we're going to do is this one here. An infinite number of solutions described by one parameter. So we have a line. We're going to find a line of intersection of three planes. So this one I've numbered number two. So it's number two consistent. And here's the equation that we're dealing with. Okay, so in this case, we have um, 1, 1, 2, and minus 2. And we have, um, we want to check, first of all, the normals. Okay, so let's say normal 1. So we have 1, 1, 2. And normal 2 is 3 minus 1 and 14. And normal 3 is going to be 1, 2, and 0. Okay, so we've got those all set up. Now you take a look at them briefly and see, are these multiples of one another? No, they're not looking very good at all, right? There's no... Um, no scalar multiples of these normals will give you any of the other ones, so they're not parallel. So now I'm going to do the triple scalar product, so the TSP. So I'm going to do, I'll do the cross product of these two, so I'm going to do N1, and I'm going to dot it, I've got my little arrows over here, N1, and I'm going to dot it with the cross product of two crossed with 3. So 2 and 3, I'm going to write them out. 3 minus 1, 14. 3 minus 1, 14. 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. Strike out the last ones, cross them here like this. So n2 crossed n3, and here we go. So we've got 0 minus 28. So I have minus 28. And I have 14 minus 0. So that's 14. And I have 6 minus minus 1. That would be 7. Okay, so you do know that if you have this for your normal 
and these are all um, divisible by whatever number you want it to be. Let's say we divide them by um, negative 7. So that would be the same as 4 minus 2 and minus 1. Okay, so that's our cross product. So the triple scalar product now is going to be normal 1, which is 1, 1, 2, and I'm going to dot that with 4 minus 2 and minus 1. And that's going to give me 4 minus 2 minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so just like I said, if you get a 0 here, that means that it's not a single point of intersection, but it could intersect as a line. How will we know if it's a line? Well, let's start off by working with the matrix. So we'll set up our matrix, our augmented matrix first. We have 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. I don't need commas between them. Let's fix that up. So I hope you're all having a not bad time with this. This is such a difficult time for everybody, including even your teacher here, dealing with all kinds of political issues now, crossing borders and, oh dear, 1, 2, 0, minus 5. Okay, there, we've set up our matrix, and I want to get, um, I want to get a 0 here, right? So I'm going to do row 2, so let's do this, we're going to say row 2 minus, um, I want a 0, so I'm going to have to subtract 3 row 1s. Okay, so this row minus 3 of those, leave the first row alone. And minus 3 of those, so 3 minus 3 is 0, and minus 1 minus 3 more is going to be minus 4, and 14 minus 6 is going to be 8, and 6 minus, minus 6 is 6, plus 6 is 12. And can we do this row at the same time? Sure, we'll do row 3 minus row 1. So if I do this minus this, it's going to give me 0 here. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and minus 5 plus 2 is minus 2. Three. Okay, so now what do we want? We want to get a 1 here. So, actually, this is minus 4, 8, 12, so I'm going to divide these. So I'm going to just do, um, I'm going to call it row 2 divided by minus 4. And that's going to give me a 1 there right away. Okay, so divide by minus 4 is 1, minus 2, minus 3, and I have 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. Oh my goodness, you see what's happened here? So now if I do row 3 minus row 2 to get my 0 here, I'm going to end up with the following. So 1, 1, 2, minus 2, 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, and if I subtract this row, subtract this row, I'm going to get 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that's telling you something very special. It says that 0, 0 times z is equal to 0. And that means there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. I can put in any value for z. Anything times 0 is 0. So it's not a point of intersection. It's going to be a line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let z be equal to parameter t. Because if I let z equal parameter t, then I can say um, if z is equal to t, because I can put in any value for t, so that means, you know, like 0 plus, plus t, right, for my, um, my symmetric equation. That's what I'm trying to say. So if we go back to the next line, we'd have 1 minus 2t equals minus 3. Uh, sorry, not 1, but y. y minus 2t equals minus 3. So y equals minus 3 plus 2t. And x, for my x value, I have x 
one of these, so minus 3 plus 2t, so that's my y, and my z is 2t's, because z was t, equals minus 2. Now I just have to solve this. So I have 4t, um, bring it to the other side. I'm going to bring the minus 3 over here, that's going to give me 1, and 4t, so minus 4t. So now that I have all these um, x, y, and z values, I know that um, the line x, y, z is going to be equal to um, 1. So my, my point is going to be 1 from here, minus 3 from my y, and zero from the z, so this would be the point, and the direction vector is going to be um, minus four from x plus two from y, didn't need to put the two, and one. So this is my direction vector, right? So we've got all that set up now, minus four, two, and one. And I'm going to write out my equation. So x, y, z equals 1 minus 3 and 0 plus t times minus 4, 2, and 1. And there's the equation of your line. Now, how do I check to see if this is the right solution? I can plug in my x, y, and z values. So this x, y, and z equals t, back into this equation. I'll do it for, um, I'll do it for the first one and you can do it for the rest. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I have x plus y plus 2z equals minus 2. So now I'm going to plug in my x, y's, and z's. So I have x is uh, 1 minus 4t and my y is minus 3 plus 2t, and I have 2 and z is t, equals minus 2. So is that equal to minus 2? Look, I have minus 4t plus 4t is 0t's, and I have um, 1 minus 3, so I have minus 2 is equal to minus 2, and that checks out. And you can do the same thing for your second and third planes. Okay, so that's, again, this is consistent, number two, and I will uh, take a picture of that first page. So this is like consistent number two. This, they're not going to be called consistent number twos, okay? That's just from my diagram. So that will be, um, I'll take a, a nice picture of this um, lovely sketch that I made for you, and I will put that on the link so that you can print it out, or you can just look at it and admire my, my fancy handiwork. <laughs> okay, I hope you're all doing well and um, I promise to get through with this vector section as soon as possible. Take care everybody. Bye for now.